Hello everybody, what is up? It is Cyborg Elf here with another video. And I decided to do a complete video um, on making a game pack from scratch. That includes getting addresses and offsets, that includes coding each line by scratch. Um, I just want to do this all just kind of, uh, just give more detail on my first game packing video. A lot of you were confused and also were wondering how you yourself can get these addresses and offsets. Um, so I decided to go make a video completely from scratch. This will be part one. Uh, part two I'll actually code and show you how you can code it. Now we're mainly going to be focusing on Cheat Engine for this and uh, we'll also be using an emulator and a ROM just because I want to show how to do a ROM game. Um, ROMs can be a little tricky and they are good to start off on. Um, they're probably one of the easiest things to start off on once you get all the settings set up for Cheat Engine to scan for the ROM. Uh, emulated game. So first thing we're gonna need is Cheat Engine and keep in mind all these links will be in the description everything you may need. Uh, so come to CheatEngine.org you want to just hit this green download button and here we go we get a little virus kind of uh, right here we can see this is obviously not Cheat Engine and the link is very long uh, definitely something sketchy there but once you get that you'll get this you'll click download and this is a virus kind of Try to get install some stupid search manager. Just exit out. You don't need to install that. And then Cheat Engine should install. Okay, I'm gonna go through the setup of Cheat Engine. I, I just don't want you guys to get a virus or anything like that. Uh, so we're just gonna go through the setup because they do try to uh, they they try to sneak in little things here. So let's go like this. Um, this is Cheat Engine, so we will accept it. You can read through this if you want. It's just a massive disclaimer. Uh, you can set your download where you want to download it. Uh, just this stuff. This is the basic stuff right here. And now here is our first little virus. It may look different. It may be a different type of little pop up for bundleware. Click no thanks, and then look around. Make sure there's no like hidden little like clicks right here. And then click next, and we should get another one by McAfee. Yes. Uh, uncheck this. Click next. And you should be ready to download. There may be some more little bundle wear after this, but yeah, I'm not gonna download this though because I already do have Cheat Engine downloaded. Now the next thing we're gonna need is RetroArc. This will be our emulator, um, just cause we're gonna be using an emulator for this uh, little quick series. Uh, so it's pretty easy to download and I'll also show you how to set up RetroArc, just get some, uh, to take away the annoying auto pause feature. And then here's the ROM that we will be using. Um, you can use a different one if you want, but Mick Kids is a fun one to test on. I was originally gonna do 007, um, but the game was a little more complex and the controls were kind of annoying if you don't have a controller. So we're gonna do Mick Kids. Uh, so first off, let's just launch our emulator for RetroArch. Uh, I already have it downloaded. You can just come and launch the EXE. And then, now first thing you want to do is you want to go to the settings on the far left, load core, download core, and then you want to download whatever emulator you need for the ROM, and if you're doing the same one as me, you're going to want to come down and you want to get uh, this right here, the Nintendo uh, NES emulator, and that should be downloaded, and next you want to just load your content, you want to just, uh, you just go find the folder that it's stored in and just uh, scan it. So it does know where the game is. And then also we want to turn off the auto pause feature because it's just honestly super annoying. So come to this little settings uh, cog wheel, user interface. Make sure you have show advanced settings to on. And you want to turn uh, don't run in background off so you can click off the screen and it doesn't pause automatically. Uh, that was honestly quite a simple setup, but oops but Cheat Engine is more of a difficult setup. So here we have Cheat Engine. Now there's more you need to do, so come to Edit, Settings. Uh, first off, come down to Extra and check this uh, right here. And then next what you wanna do is you wanna turn on the VEH debugger. Um, this just will help it with the debug process. For example, in Rainbow, you need to have this on. And, and next you wanna come to Scan Settings and you wanna turn on the this very bottom check mark. Make sure these both are on too. Uh, what this does, it allows you to read the emulator memory, uh, just so if you don't have it on, you won't be able to get the correct uh, values. I originally was trying to do this, but I didn't have this checked, and I, I'm like, why, why, why can't I find these values? So make sure this is checked. 
All right, so now let's load up RetroArch and let's load up our game. Now I already do have a save state. It's a pretty useful thing. So I already saved the game to the state of which I was in a game because it's really annoying waiting for all those loading screens. If you want to do it yourself, it's in command, save state options. You can click save state and it just saves the uh, the point at which you're last at. So I just kind of go back in time right there. Now let's come over to Cheat Engine. You want to click this little Select Process Computer icon. And you want to select the process at which you're going to be reading from. And that's going to be RetroArch or Emulator. And right here you can see the process name and the handle at which it connects. The handle is very important. So if I exit the game and launch the game again, this handle will change and I won't be able to read any memory. So just keep that in mind. If you exit the game, launch it again, you need to come do this again just so you can get the updated handle. So what we're going to be looking for is going to be our health value and since this is kind of hearts, um, as you can see we have a hearts up here, um, it's going to be more difficult than for example Rainbow Six Siege where you have exactly, you know, oh I'm at 94 health, I'm at 12 health, because uh, that is more easy to scan for, you just get your health in. For Rainbow it's kind of weird, you just add 20 to your health and scan. So that's how you do it in Rainbow, but we don't know the exact value of our health, so we're gonna do for our value type you'll have multiple value types here single byte two byte four byte eight bytes um, a float now most commonly it'll be auto set to the default of four bytes because that's what you're gonna be scanning for but you can select all down here and it scans for all this stuff um, that's more if you get stuck and you can't find the correct thing to scan for but I'll show you how to switch the four byte value into like a float or a double later once we get the value so what we want to do first is we don't know our initial value of our health, so we'll click first scan. Now we have 37 million results. It doesn't show this in this little box right here, just because that's so much results to output. But that's going to be hard to find, honestly. So what we want to do is we want to get ourselves hurt. Now we can do this by coming over to the snail. We got hurt, and our health has decreased since our last scan, so you want to click on scan type and do a decreased value and click next. Now we only have 600,000 results and as you can see that still is quite a lot but it is an improvement. Now let me explain something. These values you can see in red here have uh, our changed values since the previous scan. So those values since the previous scan have changed that's why they're in red. And going on further these addresses the ones in green are static. I restart the game and launch it again these addresses will be related to the same value. But if I restart the game and load it again, these addresses will be uh, essentially junk. So in game hacking, you obviously want to find the static address so you can use it for a hack. For example, if you had a hack and every time you had to go on Cheat Engine and enter a static address, well, that wouldn't be that, that good. That would take up a lot of time and it wouldn't be uh, sellable to consumers. So you always want to get the static address. Now, going on further with the static address, if you are in a game more complex, Assault Key, Brave Six Siege, something like that, you're going to mainly only find dynamic addresses for what you're looking for. And I'm not going to go over that in this video, but I do have a video. I'll have it linked on screen, hopefully, and in the description. Uh, it's my Cheat Engine Like a Pro video, and that goes over how to, how to find all those complex things and how to turn dynamic addresses into static addresses. But going back, this this has uh, decreased a lot, but we want to go to save state and load state. And wow, our health magically went up. So our health has actually increased since the last scan. So we can click next, and there's only 500,000 results. Now I'm going to speed up time, so basically more values change over time. Um, you can do that by clicking spacebar, and since our last scan, our health has not changed, so we can just click this a few times. And as you can see, our health, or our, our found results are going down. Now this does help a little bit, but in the long run, uh, you can't just sit there and click next. But our, our value is actually going down a lot. Now let's go get our character hurt some more, so we can do a decreased value scan. So our health has actually decreased since the last scan. So we can go to decrease value and click next. And then we can do unchanged value a bit more because our value has not changed since the last scan. And now I'll set that to that and then we'll go get hurt again. And then we can do this and wow, only 3000 results. It's much better than the millionth of results that we had earlier. 
So let's just load up again to our save state. And there we go. Now our health value has actually increased. So we can click that and we can do unchanged value a bit more. And we'll need to do this a few more times. Now with some games within two scans, you can find the value you're looking for. But in other games, it takes about 20 scans to get the value you're looking for to narrow it down to the correct address. Now our health has decreased, so we click this. And that took out about a thousand results, so this is much, much better. We'll go do this again. And we're only to 168. So let's go over here and let's do our load state again. And our health has increased, so we'll do increased value. We'll click next. And it looks like we have a lot of like the same types of values, like there's duplicates, like as you can see, these are kind of the same. So let's go and decrease our health again. All right. Oh wow, a lot of them changed once we decreased our value. All right. Huh, this is very strange. When I did this before, I honestly didn't have this much results. So I suppose let's do this again. Decreased value. And yeah, we're down to around 50 results. Um, let's just get our character killed so it goes through the, uh, the load screen again. Uh, we can load that up. And our health has increased. All right, 39 results, that's a lot better. As you can see, these are the static addresses, all the green ones, and then below it is all the, the dynamic changing addresses. Oh wow, a lot of our values are changing right now, so. We can do unchanged value and get rid of all those. And okay, we only have six results left. This is, this is very good. And wow, a bunch of change right there. So we can do that again. And we only have one left, so we can double click on it and it brings it down down here or you can click on it and click this little area right here to bring it down here to kind of our viewing area so let's hit this and oh our health went down and we actually notice a change so let's do a little experiment we'll check this active box that means it will refresh our health uh, value it will refresh the, the address to stay at this value so as we see we can go over here and it keeps putting it back to this value so we're essentially in god mode right now all right, so this is gonna be part one. Um, soon I'll have part two out where I actually turn all this into code. So that will be pretty interesting. Um, and if you guys wanna tell me a certain coding language you'd like to see used in this, just comment it down below. And if a lot of you want a certain language to have the hat coded in, I'll do that. But anyways, if you did enjoy this video, it'd help a lot if you dropped a like. Um, I'll make sure to bring part two soon, or at least I'll try to. Anyways guys, peace out.